now available on Tata Sky channel number 526. Welcome to the property news. You're watching Magic Bricks now, India's first property channel. I'm Suesha Samant. Let's take a look at the top headlines at this hour. The BMC Commissioner Ajoy Mehta finally breaks his silence on Deonar. His solution: declare the dump a prohibited zone, equip it, it, it with night vision cameras. The Commissioner's public statement comes in the wake of another massive fire at the dumping ground over the weekend, which left Mumbaikars choking. Good news for home buyers. Prices have dipped in the quarter ending December in all major property markets. However, if you're looking to play safe and opt for a ready to move in house, be prepared to shell out more. That's the word coming in from the magicbricks.com prop index made available exclusively to your channel. Godrej Properties raises 1900 crore rupees for its fund management businesses in India and Singapore named Godrej Fund Management. The fund will bring in equity investments for Godrej Properties projects across the country. Also on the show we continue our series looking beyond metros. Today we tell you about the Nagpur property market. You do not want to miss this. Another fire at Deonar dumping ground. It's shocking after the civic body seemed confident with the fact that they had taken control over the situation. The air quality has been pushed to very poor category, making the air unbreathable. After nudging the authorities, all they had to say was that they are not sitting idle on the situation. First up, our big story today. Public outrage and incessant questioning by the media finally forced the BMC commissioner to make a public statement on the Deonar dumping ground fires. However, he had little to offer apart from cosmetic solutions. Listen into what the civic chief had to say in a hastily summoned press conference. Our people are there. Cooling down operations are still on. Not fire, but there is some smoke. Cooling operations are still going on. So we need to actually they dump some almost 20 meters and above. So once you start spraying water, it takes some time for the water to seep in and cool right till the bottom of the dump. So cooling operations are still going on. Our jawans are already there and still there and working on it, and we are moving towards cooling down there. To bring our viewers up to speed, a massive fire had broken out over the weekend in the garbage dump, taking Mumbai's air quality to a new low. Magic Bricks now has been tracking this public health crisis from ground zero since the day it started. My colleague Aishwarya Paliwal was at the press conference, and she joins us with details of what Commissioner Ajoy Mehta had to say. Residents are all set to go out and vent their anger. They are all set to protest against BMC, as they say that very little has been done from the authority side as far as fire at Diona dumping ground is concerned. Very recently, another fire took place at this at Diona dumping ground, and this caused a havoc for the life of people staying close by. Not just for those who stay in Wadala and Chembur, but also for whole of Mumbai, as Mumbai's air quality index was once again pushed to very poor category. Ajoy Mehta, BMC Commissioner, called out a press conference and he spelled out the various measures that are being taken by this corporation. They said that they are looking at installing night vision cameras as well. They have already installed CCTV cameras. Now they are looking at installing night vision cameras so that they can keep an eye on what is happening in the dumping ground during the night. They are also looking at stationing 10 fire engines very close by to the dumping ground so that if any fire takes place next time it can be doused off almost immediately they are also looking at digging bore wells within the garbage dump so that if there is another fire the engines do not need to go anywhere else to get refilled he said that going forward the uh, corporation is looking at making sure of two things first is that the garbage that is coming to the owner should be segregated and should be treated before it is being dumped another thing he said is that he is making sure that the new dumping grounds like the loja and airoli will only be functional once they put a scientific uh, measure into place to treat this garbage as we are told you before on magic bricks now tcs has been roped in by the corporation to give them a detailed report on how to treat the garbage that is already lying at the owner close to 12 million tons of garbage is currently lying at deona even though commissioner promised that the authority is not sitting idle on this situation and they are taking swift actions to make sure this does not happen again 
Residents are not keeping quiet. They are saying they'll go ahead with their protest and they will protest till the time they do not get a permanent solution as they believe that these are all promises that were made to them even before. But the recent fire that took place and which pushed Mumbai's air quality index to very poor category is not a very good sign. Now, we will continue to track what the BMC does next to solve this problem. Moving on. Godrej Properties has raised nearly 2,000 crore rupees to be pumped into residential projects across the country. ABG Asset Management has come in as the lead investor. To give us more details on the new management, we are joined live on the phone line by Pirocha Godrej, Managing Director and CEO of Godrej Properties. Mr. Godrej, thank you so much for joining us. Firstly, I'd like to ask you, how is the company going to utilize this money? I mean, what kind of projects is the company planning to raise funds for through Godrej Fund Management? The fund will essentially focus on residential projects in the country's leading real estate markets, including Mumbai, NCR, Bangalore, and Pune. All right, so does this also mean that more supply homes uh, will uh, come from Godrej properties across the country? Yes, the, the purpose of this is to boost our business development activities. So yes, certainly this, um, this fund will allow us to access new projects and add those to our portfolio. And, and yes, that will, of course, uh, lead to more projects by Godrich Properties. All right. Now, with Godrich Fund Management, will this lead to less cost of funds for Godrich Properties? Um, yeah, no, it's not. You know, it's not a it's not a borrowing program. It's an equity investment program. So, Godrich Properties will co-invest um, with this platform, and our investment will be 20% of the total investment. But this certainly will give a strong boost to Godrich Properties' overall portfolio, overall business development, and certainly should be a boost to earnings in the years to come. All right. Now, lastly, we want to understand from you. Now, we know that uh, the High Court has ordered BMC for not giving any new approvals for new construction till June. Uh, how will this impact construction at Godrich? No, the High Court order uh, is, is relating to projects which haven't yet filed for approval. So many of the projects are not affected by this if the approvals are already in the framework. Certainly, we look forward to the BMC complying with the, the, the directives of the High Court and having this order removed entirely. Um, and we expect limited impact because, as I said, projects that are in uh, currently already in the approval process will not be affected. And we expect by the time new projects are ready for the final approvals, we, we hope that this, uh, this order is, is lifted. All right. Thank you so much for joining us here on Magic Bricks Now. Good news coming in for home loan borrowers. Starting April this year, home loans could get cheaper. This is largely due to the RBI's new formula to calculate home loan rates. The RBI has instructed banks to switch over to the marginal cost of funding method to calculate lending rates from the 1st of April. How is this going to translate into cheaper home loans? My colleague Amita Balachandra is standing by with more details. Well, starting the 1st of April 2016, the interest rates on your floating home loans is going to be calculated differently. Now, here's why. The Reserve Bank of India has come up with a new base rate formula, also called as the Marginal Cost of Funds for Lending Rate System. Now, according to this MCLR system, the interest paid by banks to customers will now be linked to interest charged by banks on home loans. Now, of course, uh, this was not there in the previous formula and there was a big mismatch, of course, before. Now, that mismatch has been eliminated, which means there's a big boon coming in for banks. However, this will also translate uh, as a positive for customers, considering that the transfer of interest rates from banks to customers is now going to become more transparent. What we also must remember here is that Every time banks cut deposit rates, now they will be forced to cut uh, interest rates on home loans as well. Of course, uh, we must also note that over the last one week, the government has cut interest rates on small saving, uh, saving scheme as well, which means that there is an added pressure on banks now to translate that rate cut to customers. Uh, of course, a lower interest rates means lower EMIs, which means cheaper home loans for you. The massive gap between ready-to-move and homes and those under construction is just getting wider. A new index by MagicBricks.com suggests that homes under construction are sharply cheaper than those ready to occupy, which are commanding a premium of over 15% in some markets across the country. Let's take a close look at those numbers.
prices of homes across all metros have remained stable and in some cases have inched lower in the quarter ending December 2015. That's according to the Prop Index released by MagicBricks.com. The location-specific property index throws up a big surprise in Chennai, which along with Thane has witnessed the maximum increase in prices of 3%, followed by Bengaluru with 2%. Greater Noida, on the other hand, witnessed the largest drop, falling 4%. Let's take a look at the cities individually. Prices in the Mumbai metropolitan region were flat. Navi Mumbai saw a decline of 1.2% and Thane witnessed a 3.2% increase, the highest in the country. Chambur, Borivli, Dahisar West and Mulund East saw the highest increase in prices of 15%. The difference between ready to occupy and under construction was 11%. The story was only marginally better in Bengaluru. The index saw a marginal rise of 1.8%. The average rental yield across the top 10 localities was nearly 4%, pointing towards higher growth of rental values as compared to property prices. Electronic City saw 22% rise in prices in the last year due to an improvement in infrastructure and accessibility. In Delhi, as expected, the index notes a marginal decrease of 2.3%. Areas like New Ashok Nagar, Lakshmi Nagar and Pandav Nagar saw the price decline by 18.5%. The average price per square foot in Dwarka fell by a whopping 36% over the last two years. The satellite city of Noida fell 2.2%, while Gurgaon was mostly flat at minus 0.2%. In Pune, the highest rise in prices was seen in Amanora Park Town, Pashin, Pimpri, Bugaon and Ambegaon, while Boat Club Road, Model Colony, Vagoli, Undri and Logaon saw a decline last quarter. Pimple Sodagar saw the highest growth of 18% in the last two years. Rising above the others, even if by a margin, is Chennai with a growth of 3%. In the last two years, T Nagar, Nungambakam, Pallikarane, OMR, Perambakam, and Tambaram West saw a price increment. Indices of Kolkata, Hyderabad, and Ahmedabad barely showed any signs of life moving under 1% in the quarter. The only silver lining was the IT driven areas of Gachibauli, Kukatpalli, and Madhapur in Hyderabad that moved up 6.8%. With Arjun Yadav, Rukmani Krishna for Magic Bricks Now. Now, the National Real Estate Development Council got together in Mumbai last week to decode Budget 2016, discuss the new changes and how this could translate into more affordable homes on ground. Our editor, Faye D'Souza, was part of this elite roundtable. Listen into an excerpt of what was discussed there. This was a bill that was not just much needed, but also long, long overdue. I know the industry is nervous, but wouldn't you agree that regulation really was the need of the hour? Uh, I think uh, we've had regulations in Maharashtra under MOFA and also a regulatory bill was formed and passed by even the President of India. So in Maharashtra, a lot of regulation is already in place. However, I agree with you on an All India basis, the transparency which was required for the end consumer was not available. And I think uh, this bill has really gone a long way for answering that issue of transparency, mm -hmm. which was not there. Uh, people were not coming to know what they were getting, what is the house they are getting, what is the title to the house, what is the area that they are ultimately going to get, and of course the issue of when they are going to get that house. I think those issues have been adequately answered by this bill, and I think the consumer should be extremely happy on that account, and I think it's good for the country. There is a possibility that sometimes it may, it may be misutilized, but I think everything depends upon intelligent interpretation and also, you know, good implementation of the law. And I'm sure it will be implemented nicely. It's a very comprehensive legislation, tremendous transparency, which I think so many of the developers in, in Bombay and other cities and who have been used to and are happy to be complying with that. To my mind, this particular law has given so much teeth to the consumer mm. that somewhere down the line, 
you know, black sheep are on both sides. It is not so that it is only the builders who are probably indulging into something which can be called as a malpractice. There are at times and in a large projects, the people who join initially the project, they become greedy and at the end of the day when the project goes into second and the third phase, they become a little funny and then they start looking up the new law and the provisions. Yes. That will be the cost which other, the new coming consumer will have to bear for the delay, for the litigation, for the kind of enforcement of this law which may generate. Now a law can't take care of every possibility, so we'll have to bear with it, we'll have to see how it grows and I don't think that there will be any additional cost which the builder will try to push towards the consumer and he'll have to bear the cost of this particular legislation. Let's now move on to a Magic Bricks Now special, our new series, Looking Beyond Metros. Now, after the finance minister announced an additional tax exemption on home loans for first-time home buyers who buy homes costing under 50 lakhs, we at Magic Bricks Now decided to get you a lowdown on locations that offer homes in the sub-50 lakh rupees budget in the tier 2 and 3 cities. Today, we'll talk about Nagpur's property market. On the whole, it's a well-planned city which is well-connected and generates about 47% of Maharashtra's power. There are about 20 to 25 projects which have recently been launched in the 30 to 50 lakhs range. The average price per square foot is between 3,500 to 5,000 rupees per square foot. The prime locations include Ramdas Pate, Civil Lines, Lakshmi Nagar, Bajaj Nagar, which range from anywhere between 5,500 to 9,000 rupees per square foot. Whereas the affordable locations which are Pratap Nagar, Vardha Road, Manish Nagar, Besa and Dharma Pate range from anywhere between 3,500 to 5,000 rupees per square foot. There are a lot of investments happening here, which include some big infra projects like Mauda Super Thermal Power Project, Pardi Flyover Project on NH6, Nagpur Metro. Some big educational institutes are setting up here soon, which include IIT and IIM. But most of all, everyone is eyeing the Mihan project, which consists of two parts, an international airport to act as a cargo hub and an SEZ with residential zone. It's a 50,000 crore project, which is looking at employing more than 50,000 youths and is being considered one of the potential growth drivers likely to drive up the property market. Now, to give us a more perspective on the Nagpur market, we have Arvind Nandan from Colliers. Mr. Nandan, thank you so much for joining us here on Magic Bricks Now. Now, I want to understand from you, if I'm a first-time home buyer and have 50 lakh rupees in my pocket to buy a home, how would you review the Nagpur market for me? Nagpur is, I would think it is one of the better markets uh, in central India at least. Uh, if you look at the state of Maharashtra, Maharashtra has two very large markets, one is Mumbai, the other one is Pune. And after that, immediately, one is tempted to name Nagpur. Although there is Aurangabad, Nashik, etc. But Nagpur has, uh, you know, has an edge. Uh, it has been uh, one of the most important cities. It is the hub of the railways. It is also a hub of educational and industrial activity. So from all that perspective, Nagpur is a very critical market. Uh, also, fortunately, it has been one of those places where large initiatives either of SEZ type or industrial development types have been put in place in the past. So I would think it's, it's a very, very vibrant and a very good market for future. A very vibrant and very good market. All right. Now, if what are the areas that you would really recommend and how much is the appreciation one is likely to see in these areas in the next three to five years? Uh, to me, the most critical part in Nagpur is the southern belt, which is, you know, the Vardha Road, which is going south. That is the key belt in Nagpur. So if you look at the markets which are uh, in and around that, you have Manish Nagar, uh, right next to Manish Nagar, you have Besa. You have certain other markets also like Ram Das Pet, like Dharam Das Pet, etc. So uh, these are the key markets. Uh, also, one must not forget Mihan, I, I would say. Uh, which is uh, you know a traditional industrial market but it is developing very well so i would say if i were to take a bet on future i would rather be taking a bet in these select uh, micro markets of nagpur although there are established markets like sadar and many others i would rather say if you are an investor who is looking to grow your capital in future take a bet on these markets like manish nagar besa dham das pet etc um, 
today the pricing is in the range of about 3500 going upwards to about 5000 rupees a square foot in some of these prime markets um, if everything goes well uh, there is a good amount of uh, new projects coming up uh, can be counted between 20 and 25 new projects in these markets then in the next four to five years i would definitely see a rise of about 50 percent provided uh, the macroeconomic activity continues to go forward and pick up 50 percent is quite a number mr nandan now in that case according to you what are the risks in this market for an investor you know uh, when we when we speak of risks in these markets one has to definitely keep an eye on the overall economic activity uh, Nagpur in the past has witnessed some kind of uh, a reversal because Mihan did not click very well and in the general economic activity slowed down. So the first risk is obviously of economic type or macroeconomic type. The second risk again we need to uh, analyze is the business risk. Uh, when I say business risk, I mean pers uh, purely from a real estate perspective, creating a product which is in the um, in the right mold and is rightly priced. So today's the price today's price range is about 4,000 to 4,500 rupees. You have to strike that uh, particular uh, product. As an investor, if you invested in something which is at the top end, uh, remember your risk of growing uh, the capital is slightly uh, higher. If you are striking a deal which is 3,000, 3,500 rupees in these markets, the chances are that you will make a greater capital appreciation. So pricing, that is financial or business risk, and micro, uh, microeconomic risk. Both are important, I believe. All right, Mr. Nan, thank you so much for joining us here on Magic Bricks now and telling us about the Nagpur market. Raheja Corp is pushing the pedal on this commercial property business as it sees more potential in demand for commercial space in Mumbai and Pune. Now, I had a chance to catch up with Kishore Bhatija of K. Raheja Corp recently and I asked him about the company's plans for the future and also how Reda will impact prices. Listen it. All right, now with the RERA getting passed, 70% uh, of, you know, uh, the funds need to be, uh, uh, need to go into an escrow account. I, I want to understand from you, how will this impact the ongoing projects? Like, how will the fund dynamics change? The See, this dynamics? is something, actually, if you ask me, the, the RERA, uh, the bill obviously going towards protecting the consumer and the and the industry, is a, it's a good move. As a matter of fact, I think so, it's the, possibly the first legislation in the country which is so focused towards the industry. And maybe rightfully so because obviously it's real estate and it contributes a large to GDP and it across affects a lot of people. Unfortunately, a uh, lot of this legislation has been come inside because there's a perception that the real estate industry has not been, uh, the consumers have been taken for a ride. So I would have preferred the legislation to come with a more positive mind than maybe with a little negative mind because uh, obviously you have good and bad people in the industry. So, but. I, but I think that as I also look at it, the larger challenge uh, would be, if you ask me, would be appreciation of the industry and see how these rules and regulations should apply. Mm -hmm. And obviously there will be some amount of stress, especially for the projects which are under construction. Mm -hmm. That is something I think that we have to really see. And, and, and obviously when you're having a legislation of this type which is encompassing the whole country, and which is, you know, covering states and cities which are in different level of uh, economic cycles and well-beings and whatnot and cost differences and maturity differences. It will be very difficult, you know, to have a yardstick, you know, which is common across. Right. But do you also think, uh, like many others who are now saying that, you know, there are chances that the prices will go up? you think that will happen? You know, I guess the prices are not really necessarily comes out of uh, one single factor. They are a culmination of a lot of factors. Obviously, in free market forces, demand remains the largest uh, la largest driver of prices and the supply accordingly. At the moment, I see a lot of supply across the country in various markets, a lot of unsold inventory, supply in terms of under construction and also of inventory. So, personally, if you ask me, I don't perceive price changes happening in the short run. Uh, your company is also a front runner for REITs. So, what's happening on that front? Uh, obviously, the the taxation changes have been uh, have been very. Uh, I mean, possibly as far from the central government perspective, the last piece have now come into place. So, obviously, we are all studying it, and uh, there has been an interest uh, at our group also. But I guess a little too early in the day to comment on that, and maybe the appropriate people from my people would be better to say something when more. It is 
obviously i think so i guess everybody is excited about it you know and i think so there is a there is the legislation change which we expected in the income tax which has come and obviously there are some things which we hope the state government also would do you know of uh, uh, reducing stamp duty etc so let's see how it plays out All right, K. Raheja Kaur possibly coming out with a read. With that, it's, uh, we're completely running out of time. That's all we have for you on this edition of the Property News. Thank you so much for watching. You can watch live TV on our website mpnow.in. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com/magicbricksnow, and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at Magic Bricks Now. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com/magicbricksnow.